welcome back and today what we're going to be learning about is how to make our study space efficient now before we get into anything let's just get this straight out that you don't need a proper study space a desk a light and all of that stuff to study okay if a person wants to study that person can study anywhere and you know our buzurg used to say hum log to hum log like mein footpath pe baith ke padha karte the aur tum logo ke nakhre nahi khatam hote well so you know in 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 keeping all of that in mind understand that you don't need all of the stuff that i'm going to mention right now you don't need any of it actually you just need a book and got to start studying but but it's good and it's important to invest um and think about where you're studying how you're studying because it are all effects on your study uh practices as well okay so the first thing we're going to be talking about is the location now what what you want to see first in the location is where you're going to keep your desk and if you're going to use a desk at all some people like to study on the bed and some people like to study on sofa or a dining table or many other places like on their lawn chairs so if you're not one of them people and you want to study on a study table and desk you want to think about where you want to place your study table and desk you want to place it in your bedroom or you have a separate study room or maybe in the normal living room now it all depends on what kind of study person you are understand this that I, what i'm going to tell you and tips and tricks is of what kind of study person i am not everyone studies the same not everyone has the same tips and tricks these are some things that i'm going to tell you that you can take inspiration from you don't have to emulate exactly what i'm doing okay so i am a kind of person that i need to study on a desk and a table proper study desk okay you cannot study on the bed Now there are researchers done that you study on the bed you sleep okay I don't know why I, okay, I'm not I'm not judging people who study on the bed this score great even studying on the bed and I I I think that that's amazing if they can do that but if you're not one of them people and if you sleep while on the bed studying then it's about time that you get yourself a table if you're one of them people like to study on the dining table that's fine but make sure that dining table is not in a very a uh, very kind of place that every of your family members passes that area maybe that dining table should be in like a drawing room area that you know it's usually locked away in the corner of your house and usually people don't pass it use it as a conduit or something okay if that's it's not a passage of distraction then totally just use your dining table it's cheap it's it's always there and you know it's fine right but then it's not a permanent space the dining table has a demerit that it's not a permanent space if guests are coming over and you have to eat on there or parties happening you have to completely wrap up all of your stuff there and you know shift it to wherever you you know you put your stuff uh, on your bookshelf or whatever so that's a bit of an inconvenience and i like a study space that is always permanently organized to my um you know preferences and it shouldn't be you know temporary dining table seems like a temporary study space so that's one demerit with that one so what about like lawn chairs and sofas and stuff i like to think of them as study spaces too but because there's research is done that you want to change your study locations so you shouldn't be studying at one place at all times so even though i love my study desk and my study place i do tend to change it up sometimes i would just get up go to my lawn i don't have lawn chairs but i just sit on my stairs in my lawn and just like read so it's just a nice little change but it's definitely not permanent okay so change up your study location helps to build new tempo it helps to build a little bit more motivation um but keep a permanent space along with it so location matters a lot guys um now location has a lot of other variables as well Now if you're going to have a study table and desk, I would suggest not to put it in your bedroom. If you have a spare bed, spare room, go ahead and make that your study room and study there. Um because when you're in the bedroom, you're very like always in the mood of like, oh, I'm in my bedroom, I'm sleep. That's just me. Uh, if I know my bed is there, I can see my bed from my study table. All I want to do is just go to sleep. So, what I've done with my study table is I put my st- study table across the wall so I can see nothing but the wall when I'm studying. So, don't put your study table across the window where you can see everything activities going outside in the window. Don't put your study table uh across the wall where the door is so you wherever whoever passes by, you see them. Um or you could just close the door. Don't put your study table across the bed. So you see the bed, it's nice comfy made up bed. You want let's just go to sleep. Okay, these are little passive techniques that just, you know, tweet, little tweet. 
uh, tunes your mind to think that you're right there in the study zone. And that's important. In the long run, that's important. So what I've done is I've kept my study table right across the wall. So I don't see my bed, I don't see anything. I see a straight blank wall. So I have nothing but my book in front of me. Now, with location comes lighting. So I think that lighting is one variable that everybody needs, even people who study, you know, on the bed. Everybody needs lighting when you need to study and that is important for your health in the long run. Okay, so you could either have bright windows wherever you're studying. So if you have study room, make sure that the windows are nice and bright and open, right? Or in your bedroom again. But if you don't have that luxury, because most of us don't, I don't have big windows, I have like small, tiny windows. So what we should do is get a reading lamp, okay? And then there's multiple varieties of where you can get these reading lamp from. So this is a reading lamp and this is, a, it's movable, it allows me to kind of rotate it and it allows me to have adjustments on my book or on, on you know, diffusely and everything and I've stuck it to the wall so it's going nowhere. Now you can have other options like portable reading lamps, small reading lamps, headlights, they're like these bad headlights you can read when you're on the bed. Multiple options for light. But one of the options, one of the things that I would suggest is to look into the color of the light you're using. That's also very, very important. So if you're gonna use like a, like a warm light, that will help you to be more creative, that will help you to focus more. But if you use a very cold, harsh light, that will help in concentration. So I, I you know, that's just the, what the research says, but I feel, for me, when I'm sitting on my desk, I just want a nice little warm yellow light. Um, it doesn't hurt my eyes. The white light can just hurt my eyes. I feel like the warm light is kind of, you know, it's mellow. So I'm fine with that one. So you want to experiment with what you are fine with, the yellow light or the white light, and how much light you need and um, in what direction you need that. But the grand scheme of things, you need a very good light source, either windows or a reading lamp. Do not study without a reading lamp, guys. Do not think that your normal bedroom lights are gonna do it because they're, they're not enough and then we're putting a strain on our eyes and our concentration dips down and we feel so sleepy. You need to have all your resources with you there in your vicinity, right? You don't wanna just always have this book and then you get up 10 minutes later, oh, my pen bulga, and then you run out and get your pen, oh, my pani bulga, and then you run out and get your pani, oh, my rough paper bulga, and then you get out your rough paper, oh my God. Don't do that, guys. You have everything across you. You should have your books, whatever you're gonna use at that study period, got them, you got your pens, you got your stationery, you got your laptop, got your water bottle, got your snacks, if you're that kind of person, snack. I would suggest don't eat while you're studying. It uh, it deters your concentration, but you know, everybody is different. If you were, you want to munch on popcorns, go ahead, okay? Um, what else? Um, you, you gotta have your resources with you, okay? You gotta have your resources with you so you're not getting up after five minutes. You're not distracted, okay? Eliminate distractions, that's the most important part about having an efficient study space is that a little distractions, right? Cool. But these are the books that I would use usually to study in that study period. And I don't have to get up uh, constantly. I have it there all the time. So these are the two piles of books that I like to keep. And it's just a system that I've set up. I don't know why, but I have. And then right in front of me is my laptop. I cannot study without my laptop. Also one of the things that I would suggest, guys, put your phone away. Now you'll be like, no, but I Google on my phone. All my lectures are on my phone. Shift everything to your laptop. Okay, no excuse to touch your phone, even if it's just opening a lecture, because you know the minute you open up your phone, oh, there's a WhatsApp message, let's check that out. No, 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 okay? Just put your phone away and use your laptop. Everybody should got a laptop, okay? Or maybe a tablet, a little bit inexpensive choice. But guys, laptop, get a second-hand one. It's not that expensive these days. Get a second-hand one. Um, or, you know, get good grades and get the laptop in Prime Minister laptop scheme. Okay, I, I, I digress. I don't know why. Okay, so get, a, you get yourself a laptop and put it right in front of you. Because with medicine, you need to do a lot of Googling, a lot of research papers, a lot of articles. You gotta read a lot of stuff to get a concept in your head, right? You gotta do that with a laptop, okay? So you gotta have it right in front of you, okay? And then you have a nice little study space which should always be clean. Now, one of the tips that I would give you to efficiency, to maintain efficiency in study space, is to keep it clean and organized every single day, okay? Don't have a scheduled day. Yeah, Sunday go but no, no, no. Do it every single night when you're done with your study session. 
you're, you're studying and studying and studying when you're about to go to sleep now clean up your table organize everything where it needs to be because the next day when you get up and when you're sitting down again to study it's nice and you know at your default position because the next thing i would suggest is to have a big bottle of water not a tiny one a big bottle of water because hey hydration helps your brain and your brain helps you to study basic science okay cool all right it's a big bottle of water guys Another thing that I would suggest is to keep your pens and pencils right there on the table, not in your drawers, okay? Because um, you'll be like, oh, I black pen. I need pen. I need to Oh, yeah, wait a minute. I need pink to use it. You know, uh, you to highlight it. Okay, I need to use it. Don't do that, okay? So keep it on your desk in like nice little pots. I use this recycled um, Pringles box. I don't know why. I like it, so I just put my color pens in my Pringles box and my like a black holder I put my black and blue pens in that one and I've got everything on my table right in front of me and I would like you guys to share it in the comments below if you got different uh, ideas of a study space if you are one of them people that studies on the bed you can comment below comment below comment below and tell us how you manage that how how do you think that the bed is the perfect way place to study because I can't understand that, especially because of your posture. You know, I feel like when you're on the chair, your posture is kind of nice. It's nice and straight and it's, you know, I don't even lean back on my chair a lot. I like to keep my spine erect as much as possible because it's better that way. But when you're on the bed and you're trying to write something, you bend down, it's not best, okay? Let's be real, guys. So, you know, in the long run, the posture is also affected and I don't know how you do it on the bed. Guys, don't study on the bed. <laughs> But if you think that that's best for you, then go ahead. Another thing that you could do is put a big clock right in front of you to keep track of time. So I would like to do that. I, I don't like like I don't like to use my laptop, uh, the little tiny little digital clock that it provides. No, no. I like to have a nice big clock um, so that yeah, I keep track of time. So like I'm studying and I know that it's already 50 minutes. We can take a five minute break now. But some people, and I get that logic, make sure that they don't have time in front of them so that they're not constantly you know pacing their study time they're just they're focusing on their study and not thinking about how long i've been studying because if they see the time oh my god you know i get that logic but for me i like i i like to use this pomodoro method and you can find this everywhere on the internet is just study for a fixed period of time and then take a five minute break I do that for 50 minutes and then I take a five minute break and then again 50 and then five minutes and that the big clock on my table allows me to you know do that comfortably I don't have to check my phone or my laptop it just tells me right there okay so another thing about my laptop that I would say is my laptop stand. Now understand when you're studying from your laptop, your laptop is lying flat on your table. So your eye level is here and your laptop screen is here. That what you would do, you would bend your head like this and then you would do this. What is this? That's a bad posture. And in the long run, what you're gonna develop is bad posture. You're gonna have your back pain. You're gonna have different difficulties studying for long periods of time. And you wanna make sure that you're comfortable as much as possible. So get yourself a laptop stand that has like different levels and that would allow your laptop to get to your eye level. You can try a standing desk. A lot of people on the internet are trying a standing desk. Um, but for me, I, I just basically use my laptop stand to lift my laptop screen up to my eye level as much as possible. So I'm not crouching as much, right? So I'm just reading a laptop now, okay? I'm doing questions, I'm doing whatever. And I'm like, okay, okay. And my laptop screen is right on my eye level. That helps, okay? And my laptop stand has this inbuilt fan it cools down my laptop as well. Okay guys, so I hope you learned something from this and how to organize your space and how to be efficient with it. And you can, you know, apply these things to your study space in your own way. And I would like to know what your study spaces look like. You know, comment below about where you study, you know? Do you study on the bed, guys? Do you? I'm judging you. <laughs> so yeah, subscribe!